Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. This is the Ramble. It uh, wanders on until about midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States and all over the world. But it happens to be 10 o'clock Eastern Time, and we're very prejudiced to that time. Okay? Hey, I'm Alex Bennett, and we got a guest as we do every now and then. We love this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown is with us. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alex. How you doing? Oh, I'm on fire. <laughs> oh, I'm on fire. Got to be positive. <laughs> yeah, got to be positive. Got to think of things positively. Do you do you have any do you have anything positive that you can say? <laughs> yes, uh, let's see. It'll all be over soon. Mm -mm. Very good, Bubs. I uh, I'm happy the to hear the nightmare will be over. Yeah. Soon it will all be gone. You know, I, 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 you know, I have this great fear of death. Uh, but I was watching something, and I can't remember what it was, in which somebody was saying that I'm glad that I, I I'll be happy when I'm dead because I'm sick and tired of all the problems that life presents. Oh, I like that. And I, and I thought, well, that's a way of looking at it. You know, there's a yeah. relief. There's a, <laughs> at least a relief from that. You know. Like I'm having, yeah. I'm currently having problems with with Skype, because they went to a new Skype and I can't use the new Skype for my shows easily. All right, I can use it, but I can't use it easily, and I may have to stop doing what we call the citizen panels if I can't solve all my problems, and that has just been consuming me constantly, and. I always worry about every little thing that happens, and I'm thinking, hey, if I was dead, none of this would matter. So exactly. maybe, maybe if I live long enough and I get enough aches and pains, I'm going to think of death as being a welcome relief from something. You know. Yes, nothingness will be better than this hell we're in now. You see, the, 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 thank you, Bubs, and thanks, everybody, for <laughs> tuning in to the, another episode of Life <laughs> Sucks with Larry and Alex. <laughs> And I, and I really have nothing to complain about. I've had a pretty good life, you know. I I, I can't complain about it. So yes, it, you just uh, but as you get older, it just uh, it just seems like every day is a, a new pain. Or uh, you know, I got to tell you a story. Um, I uh, had a um, you know in your life you have people that were important to your life that created a certain. Uh, uh, um, importance to what was happening with you, and so I um, it, and people who shoved you in a direction. Does this any of this make sense? Yes. yes. And, you know that that you met up with that kind of helped push you in the direction you were going to go, and we all have those people, but we forget them. And then I was reminded of one of them by um, David Farrell over at the Bay Area Radio Archives, uh, who there was this radio station in San Francisco that I used to listen to when I was a kid that became a big sensation called KOBY. It was the first top 40 station in San Francisco. And on that station was a guy named Ted Randall. And when I was starting out in radio, I sought out Ted Randall, and he met with me at his office and gave me some advice and kind of pushed me in the right direction and I think helped me get a job at KLAD in Klamath Falls, Oregon. Uh, but, you know, over the years you forget that incident, you forget that part of your life, and you don't, you know, I think of certain people who I listen to who were an influence on my career and uh, people that I admired and uh, who maybe I bumped into that said something nice to me, like Don Sherwood, who was the biggest radio star San Francisco ever saw, okay? I wrote him and said, can I come down and watch your show? And he said, sure, kid. And I came, went down and watched him for a whole day. And that was an influence on me. 
Oh, yeah. But I had forgotten about Ted Randall until the name Ted Randall was brought brought up by, by, by my friend over at the Bay Area Radio Archives. And so I got a hold of Ted Randall. He's still alive. He's 92 years old. And he's living, li- 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 living, wow. living in Canada. So uh, I did an interview with him, which we have probably already broadcast on uh, on the on the or podcast on the uh, on the ramble and uh, I got to talk to him and and what what the main reason I wanted to call him and talk to him was to say thank you because he sat down with me and he gave me advice and he gave me a piece of advice which was in the interview that I that I remember forever and uh, so there are people who you kind of forget, but were a nudge for you in the right direction. Now, my question to you is, as a comedian, was there anybody like that for you? Uh, uh, Robin, yeah. He, uh, <laughs> early, I think of my, I had been doing comedy three months as it's some open mic, and, you know, when you start out, it's pretty terrifying. And I had a pretty good set late night at the zoo, and he came over to me and just said, because up until then, he'd seen me. By the way, let, let's tell people the zoo is the Holy City Zoo, which was a yeah. club, a very small club, so cl- small that if you wanted to go in and change your mind, you had to leave the club. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh, so so uh, he had seen me a couple times before. It was right after Reagan got shot, and he kept, he'd pass me. He'd go, good evening, Mr. Hinckley. So I... <laughs> To this day, I don't know if I either look like John Hinckley or he just found me creepy like Hinckley. But then uh, I had this set that went pretty well one, late one night, and uh, Robin came up to me and said, that was amazing. I'm, I'll never call you Mr. Hinckley again. So I just thought, wow, that just gave me the impetus to keep going. I said, wow, he thought I was funny. You know, He's an icon. Uh, well, for a kid starting out in the business, that had to be... Oh, it was huge, yeah. It was huge. Yeah. Anybody anybody we wouldn't know that kind of guided you, that kind of gave you a push at all? Uh, there was a comic, uh, he had uh, Rich Marks, who was on the scene here, one of the first people I talked to, and mm-hmm. he just kind of gave me some advice. I mean, when you're start, anything is helpful when you're starting out, and he just, because I was going to do a, they had an open mic at the punchline. He goes, no, no, you don't want to start there. It's too big. Go to the Holy City Zoo. That's where you should start out. Well, that, you know, it was great in those days. You had a club like the Holy City Zoo in which almost anybody could get go on stage, right? I mean, that was the kind if of the you, policy. Yeah, on Tuesday night, you would come in and sign up, and if you signed up, you got on. And they went till 2 in the morning, and uh, you would. they guaranteed you get on, and you did. Yeah. And and that was a great training gap ground. I mean, we don't, do we have those training grounds anymore? No, like the uh, the punchline to get on now, you have to go down there, and it it'll be like nine months before you'll get on. But you have to come down and hang out, and so it's, it's if you're getting the comedy now, it's horrible from what I hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, today, would you know how to get into comedy? I don't think so because there's so many there's so many people there's just a sea of people trying to get into it so the odds were never good now they're just horrible. You know what I you see? I always revered the 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 stand up comic, I the the pure stand up comic. You're you fall into that class, all right, of the pure stand up comic. Um. And the reason I liked them was because they had no other reason to get on stage but to make people laugh. Yeah. Uh, I always hated the people who went out, built a comedy act, maybe even bought it in many cases, so they could get recognized and then go down to Hollywood and get a series. And then they well, never that was, did. Uh, very common in the 80s. Yeah, you would buy, because in LA you would never do more than 20 minutes. So you yeah. try to get this little bullshit 20 minute act together, and you were going down there to be seen to get into acting. And some people even bought their act. Yeah, absolutely. And then they would get seen, and then they would get a series, and then they were they never went on stage again. No. You and know, that's what uh, I think is what I liked about Robin would go out and do movies, and when he was done with the movie, he would come back to San Francisco and just hit every club he could, and just, he'd love stand up. Well, I think the same is true. For instance, Seinfeld's a good example of that. Seinfeld mm-hmm. probably, I mean, he's often often said that he 
hated doing the television show, but he realized that was a means to an end. But he loves stand-up. He will never give up stand-up, and he keeps doing stand-up. And he, he's a great stand-up, but he loves stand-up, and I appreciate that because it's an art in and of itself and should not should not be used as a stepping stone to movies or TV shows or whatever because once you get to that, a lot of these people just go, okay, I'm, 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 I'm out of the business of being a stand-up. Right. Uh, Seinfeld, I've really become to I like him a lot, and he, uh, he had one of my favorite quotes, quotes in the 80s was uh, – because a lot of the comics I knew was they were saying they wanted to get into acting. They say I want to be doing stand up when I'm 50. That was, I don't want to be doing this when I'm 50. And I heard Jerry Seinfeld say this is exactly what I want to be doing when I'm 50. Yes, yes, and he was very good at, at uh, he he was terrific. You know, he was maybe uh, I think one of the best stand ups ever. Um, well, he, yeah, he's got that obsessive quality about trying to find the perfect joke. Is he works so hard at it? Yeah, but also, you know, he did the show called Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee, and what people don't realize, what those shows were was an excuse to riff. You know, when mm -hmm. a bunch of comics get together, what do they do? They play riff. with each other. They riff. They try to top each other, and, you know, the, the conversation, it, it's almost, it's strange. Conversation between two comics isn't really conversation of a normal quality. You know what I'm talking about? Right, right. It's like you say something, and then the other guy tries to top that, and then you say something to top that, and then you get into riffs back and forth. What you're trying to do is you're trying to find jokes as you're talking. Yeah. I've, uh, and I've done gigs with Dana Carver where we drive out to the gig together, and uh, sometimes some of the things in the car are so funny, and I go, God, why is it so funny? And he says, because there's no... Uh, we're not trying to please an audience. We're actually being ourselves. Right, right. But you're also so, you're also while you're talking to each other, you're looking for material. Right. Um, and 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 you find material. You know, there's no question about it. And that's what I also love. About, that's what I love about comedians getting coffee. People don't realize this is what comedians do. That kind of banter back and forth. And Jerry enjoys being with other comedians. Mm -hmm. He enjoys that energy. Uh, so I really appreciate him. I just think that for a guy who became bigger than soap, you know, uh, that he he really loves stand-up. Yeah, and I, I, I like that show, too, because I like cars. So. <laughs> yes, although you haven't bought a new one in how many years? Yeah. <laughs> I had time to get a new one. I had the, I got a 2000 Camry. So. A 2000 Camry, yeah. But it is in the same millennium, almost. <laughs> so if you bought a new car, since you say you like cars, what would you get to replace the 2000 Camry? A 2001 Toyota? What? <laughs> I would like to, uh, what would I, I always wanted a Corvette, although. Yeah. That was that is kind of the. Uh, <laughs> I think you're dead at this point if you get a Corvette, aren't you? Just it, it's something like that. Yeah. But, but my question is, my question is, uh, well, well, number one, doesn't that Camry suck up gas like nothing? It's not going? bad, and I just hit. I've just hit three hundred ninety-five thousand well, miles on it. <laughs> I mean, it's it, the car is just it's it's bulletproof. It will not die. Well, don't say that because now you're going to go out this morning, start it, and it won't start, See, and, it, and that'll be it. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll give me an excuse to buy a new one then. But uh, I uh, I was getting new tires last summer, and I just thought I, you know, I had like three hundred eighty thousand miles. So I said, Hey, three hundred eighty thousand miles. And they pointed to another camera in the parking lot. And he goes, That one's got five thirty. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Apparently, those those cars never died. No, a guy that works on Toyotas told me, he said the Toyotas that were made between 94 and 2002 are probably the best cars ever made in the history. Really? He said they're still good, but they're not. the newer ones are not going to be as durable as these were. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, a little car talk, folks, here on the program. Yeah, there is. It's Comics and Cars with Alex Bennett. So last time, we, we every now and then you come on with names of people you want me to identify. See if you can yes. stump me. Uh, and I can I, never stump you. And I enjoy it. But you've got this book, and I imagine we could do 100 episodes of this because you've got, the, is the book a big book? It's an old almanac, right? and it, it's, uh, this is from like 2000, so... I need to get a newer one because there's more people. Well, no, but no, but, yeah, but if you, well, of course, some of the people who die are older, you know. Uh, but anyway, so do you have any more names that I can play with here? Uh, sure. We got uh, in kind of a, uh, I remember him, Stephen Boyd. Stephen Boyd was a British actor, I believe. He was in Ben Hur with Charlton Heston, he played Marcellus. How do I remember this? My mind today is I'm remembering names like crazy today. Yeah. Maybe it's the too much coffee I'm drinking today. I don't know. But I'm remembering these names. And Stephen Boyd, and he played Marcellus, and he was with Charlton Heston. Usually <laughs> I'd be going Stephen Boyd. He played, what was the name of that character? And he was opposite, uh, uh, what was it? Oh, Charlton Heston. You know. No, I'm just boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And he was in some really bad movie called The Oscar, I think. Oh, yeah. That was, but it's one of those guilty pleasures that if you watch it, it's so bad, it's good. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if that makes sense, folks. But, yeah, sometimes films can be really bad and be distinctive in their in their badness, as it were. Okay, it died at 49. Wow. Young. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, God, there's so many here. Uh Brian Ahern. Brian Ahern. Uh, uh, um, I know Brian Ahern. I mean, I know of the actor. Uh, I just, I think he had a mustache. Yes, he did. Yeah, I think he was English. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and he was he was always another one of those with actors. I can't tell you anything he was in. I mean, okay. I'm well, this guy, this is this guy's well known, but you probably know something weird about him. Uh, uh, <laughs> Busby Berkeley. Well, Busby Berkeley, God, I mean, Busby Berkeley was, he he directed, he was, to begin with, he was a great director of musicals. Uh, and all those wonderful musicals from the 30s, for instance, like, uh, 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 what am I trying to remember the names of them? Gold Diggers, the Gold Diggers films, uh, and so on. Um uh, he directed the, the originally he directed the dance numbers in those films, and then he started right. just directing the whole films. Uh, and his dance numbers were amazing. I mean, they were the ones with you know ten thousand tapping feet. You know, it, it was it, they were amazing. Uh, the overhead shots where people the, the all of a sudden all the girls would form flower petals and things like that. <laughs> I mean, he was a, a visionary and. Very, you know, you would think Busby Berkeley was gay, but he wasn't. You know, um, th there are choreographers, folks, who are not gay, and Busby Berkeley was one of them, very much a heterosexual. Uh, in 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 that area of of dance, a lot of the choreographers were gay. I mean, and they were good, and maybe it was being gay that helped them be be as good as they were. But Busby Berkeley was brilliant. Just brilliant. So I love his films. Um, and I'm still amazed at how he got all those camera angles and shots and things like that. But he, he had in his mind how something should look, and then he went out and got it. It was uh, the big overhead shots. Uh, the big overhead shots, that was one of them. How about the ones where he goes through all the women's legs? I mean, you're going through literally a valley of crotches, you know. And I'm going, how? <laughs> I said, that's why he. That's why we know he isn't gay, you know. But he he literally, <laughs> literally would take a camera. The w women would be kind of standing there in a V and and just go past all their all their crotches. And I think the amazing part about it, if you go back to those films and you you freeze frame it, there's not one camel toe in the bunch. So. <laughs> It'd be a good name for a porno movie, Valley of the Crotches. The Valley of the Crotches. Uh, anyway, so. Okay, another name. 
uh, TV uh, personality, Alan Funt. Of course, uh, Candid Camera, you know. Uh, did he do, I don't think he did anything else, did he? Well, I don't think he tried. I think it, uh, what is what it started out as, this is, uh, you see, here are things that I know. It started out as a radio show called Candid oh. Microphone. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and it was fairly popular. I I don't think it lasted all that long before the advent of television. But once television came in, he decided to adapt it and call it Candid Camera. And, uh, you know, and then they would do all these various things. It would Buster Keaton, I remember, did one, you know, where he was sitting there. I think he was drinking some coffee and his hat was falling into the soup or something. I don't know. And then you watch the people's reactions. There was part of me that loved the show. There was part of me that hated it because I felt it was very mean. You know, it was like, look at you, you asshole. We just got yeah, you on candid yeah, camera. I wasn't a big fan of it either. You know, you just made a fucking fool out of yourself because we dragged you in that direction, and now you look like a fool to everybody. You're on candid camera. And then the reaction is always, no. No, Where? where's the camera? Where? I don't... <laughs> You know, I, there was something mean about that show. I, I and 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 of course, I liked it when I was younger. I watched it, but as years went on, I re I began to feel guilty about watching it. You know what I felt guilty about watching? Did you want? You probably didn't watch any of this. Uh, you don't have HBO, do you? No. Oh, see, uh, silly of me to even ask. Um. They ran this thing on Michael Jackson called Leaving Neverland. Mm -hmm. I, I watched the whole thing, but I felt guilty about it. You know? Because of, of, of what was being revealed in it and the fact that I, w I was being asked to believe every bit of it. And uh, there was part of me that wanted to believe every bit of it because it then makes watching four hours of this piece of shit worth it. <laughs> But I felt guilty about watching it. And I think that's what happened with me and Candid Camera. I got to feel guilty about watching it. You know, because what was the object? To make assholes out of people. So, Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Michael Jackson does not come across well. Oh, in this thing? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. He comes across as, uh, you know, um, a little butt-fucking pederast. You know, I mean, he just... It, 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 if you if you're going to believe the whole story, you know, but it's only told from one side, uh, and I don't know that there is another side. There would be Michael's side if he was alive, but there's no other side because um, uh, uh, you know the family says, well, they never interviewed us. Well, why should they interview you? You didn't know he was doing this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but it is only the word of two of these people. I mean, one of the kids that used to hang out all the time with Michael was Macaulay Culkin. He says, nothing like that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, who knows? You know, who knows? Uh, and like you say, it's kind of when the person can't defend himself when they're dead. So. Yeah. I mean, I was all for the R. Kelly thing. I watched that, and I was riveted to it because they were presenting... Uh, the, the the case that they were making and they were making it uh, a step at a time with with these women who had been um, assailed by by R. Kelly and R. Kelly's here to defend himself you know but Michael Jackson isn't here to say no that mm -hmm. never happened and and they would never do this documentary if he was still alive that's the other part of it no we don't want to touch yeah. that he <laughs> might sue us you know, so who had that horrible joke about why is Michael Jackson's house like a sale at Kmart? Little boy's pants are half off. <laughs> <laughs> I forget who that was, yeah. but it was so stupid. I laughed. <laughs> so as I say, I always felt guilty about watching Candy Camera for the same reason. You know that I'm yeah, I'm getting a guilty pleasure out of it, but it's somebody else's expense. Expense, right? Okay. You know, so anyway, that's, yeah. Anyway, one more name, quickly, just one quickly. more name. Okay, one my I thought this woman was so hot, Veronica Lake. Oh, of course, she had the, the hair over her one, one yeah. uh, over her eye, one eye. 
Actually, she did a movie I love called uh, uh, Sullivan's Travels with Joel McRae. Uh, and um, uh, it, wa- it was a S- Preston Sturges film. See, I'm remembering all these names. See? Preston yeah, Sturges yeah, film, I, I, one of my favorite films. If you ever get a chance to see Sullivan's Travels, you must see it. Um, in fact, that's where they got a title for a film. Because in the movie, the director is sick and tired of directing these goofy comedies. And so he wants to make a movie out of this book he read called Brother, Where Art Thou? And, uh, uh, of course, the Coen brothers recently made a film by that name. Yeah. It was kind of a, tr- a tribute to, to, to Preston Sturges. And um, it's a wonderful film. It's just a wonderful film. And uh, what, what, what was the name we were going for here? Veronica Lake. Veronica Lake. And she plays the girl in this picture without the hair over her eyes. And she is adorable. Just adorable. Yeah, she was a, She was really hot. And uh, and in this I picture, think, terrific actress. You know. Good actress. And uh, apparently uh, the career and life didn't end very well, <laughs> as what, I recall. What, what happened? Do you remember it all? Uh, she was, I think she, alcoholism, and she wound up working at some crappy bar in some small town, and just people mm. would come by, didn't you used to be? And she, oh, she denied Oh, they, they do that to me. So, you know. <laughs> hey, Bubs, we've run out of time. Well, we'll have more names next time. Uh, we'll have more names next time, more fun with Bubs. I enjoy our talks together. I, I really love do. this. I yeah. really do. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Bye, Bubs. Bye, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Bubs. We'll talk to him again next week. I just, I love talking to him because he gets me talking, and it's somebody to talk to, and uh, it's a half hour I don't have to do here. Anyway... Uh, where are we? Okay, so let me see. I guess I should open up the lines. I always keep waiting for the day that I try to open up the lines and Skype goes, fuck you, you can't use this version of Skype anymore. You know, I hate them. I really hate them. I hate I hate Microsoft. I hate, uh, I hate all these people that have made my life a living hell, including anybody who's created technology because I've become such... It, it, my whole life is just putting out one technical fire after another, and I, I don't know, I just, ugh. what the hell? Anyway, the lines are open. You can call if you want to. We uh, we allow people to call using Skype. I wish that. Why hasn't somebody? I mean, people are so unhappy with Skype. I got to tell you, they are really definitely unhappy with Skype. So my question is. Why doesn't somebody come along and say, hey, we're going to fix this problem. We're going to give you something better than Skype. Or we're going to give you what Skype does, but we're going to, we're going to make it work for you. And we're going to listen to what you want out of it. Instead, it's just, it's, it sucks. It just absolutely sucks. Hold on a second. I'm turning down the fan a little bit because it's getting a little too, too windy in here. By the way, I ever show you this shirt? This is for Corley Motors. Uh, see on the back it says, I think you can see. Does, can you see that? I can't tell whether I've got my back to you or not because I can't see the camera. But that Corley Motors was the, was the company, the motorcycle company, in full throttle, a game I did a voice for. So I, I got that as this is a, <laughs> as a kind of prize uh, for it. Oh, hey, look who's here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Charlie Wallace. He's the first one uh, out, of the, out of the box. Uh, and here comes the second one out of the box. Uh, uh, and it happens to be, um, um, yeah, Phil Meyer. Hey. Yeah. Hi, Phil. How you doing this evening? Hey, Phil. Hi, Charlie. Wait a minute. Me in again. Wait, there's some. <laughs> wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just turn something down here a second. There's a little slapback or something happening, which we've never been able to figure out. That's a some kind of problem in Skype. Yeah, it's their limited mix minus. It's their no. It has nothing to do with their mix minus. I have found out. Yeah. It has nothing to do with their mix minus. It happens to do with their fact that they're a fucking company owned by Microsoft. 
and uh, so you know. you're down on you down on gates. I'll tell huh? you, I get slapped back so so seldom mm -hmm. these days that I don't even think twice about it. So, what the hell? Uh, um, uh, oh. Jesus. What? <laughs> Nothing. What was she handing you a condom or something? What, what? No, no. Uh, I had uh, fried chicken tonight, and uh, for dinner. And she says I dropped a bone. Uh, I don't remember. I thought you were that. staying away from bad food. Well, this this was really good fried chicken. Uh, well, it, it, uh, you know something. Oh, I've got news for you. Yeah, there is no such thing as bad fried. Well. I'm trying to think. It's it wasn't breaded. It, it's it's fried, but it's not breaded. What was it? Uh, I don't know. This place in Arinda does it called Casa Arinda, and they and their chicken is so good. Uh, I told Faye, uh, I called them, paid for it, and had her pick it up on her way home. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's, I, it's the best fried chicken I've ever had. Uh, and I've been going there since the 80s, the early 80s. Uh, you know, I just found that sometimes just really skanky fried chicken is good. Like, it, it, I don't care what anybody Popeyes. says. Popeyes. Popeyes is Popeyes. terrific. It's, it, it's very good, but don't take it home and then then eat it. Uh, you know, if you don't eat it within the first few oh, minutes, oh no, of no, no, I, I've taken it home and it's been to, oh. it's been good. The problem is that they don't have the same quality control that that, that uh, some other companies have. In yeah. that, I found that I'll go down and I will just get great chicken from from the place down the street, and then yeah. I will come home another time with it, and it's kind of eh, it's too dry or something like that. Um, but Popeyes is um, it's you know it was a a, a uh, what can we call a recipe created by New Orleans yeah. chefs. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Paul Perdome, before he died, I interviewed him, and then he died. Uh, no, I uh, interviewed him, and mm -hmm. I said, uh, and I had I had asked uh, uh, Julia Child this question too. I said, "Do you do you eat any kind of uh, fast food?" And he says, "Yeah, I do. I eat, I eat Popeyes." He said, yeah. "Because all the people at Popeyes who are running it are either proteges of mine or other New Orleans chefs." And they have brought to fast food that New Orleans quality. And you know yeah. something? Uh, he, and he said, then he said to me, he said, you, you want the best, uh, what is it, the, uh, uh, red beans and rice? Red beans and rice, yeah. He said, go to Popeye's. And yeah. I went to Popeye's, I got the red beans and rice, and to this day if I get the red beans and rice, which I don't do much because of the diet, uh, uh, it, is, it is terrific. And I went to a, to a New Orleans-style restaurant in San Francisco one night. And I said, give me the red beans and rice. And they brought the red beans and rice, and it was terrible. And I said yeah. to him, I said, this red beans and rice sucks. And he said, well, I'm sorry. I said, you know what you can do about it? I said, well, I said, get a big bucket, go down the street to Popeye's and have them load it up and then serve it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there's a there's a southern there, southern style place in San Francisco. I think it was called One Thousand something. Uh, One thousand was the address on Fillmore. Yeah, uh, and that was very good. I've had food there. And yeah. then there's a place in Oakland called Pecan, which uh, has really good uh, mm -hmm. southern style food. Hi, Rob. Yeah. Hello, hey, Rob. Hey, Rob. How's it going? Anyway. All right. Y yeah. But you know, I mean, I, uh, I, 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 he, he was absolutely right, Prudhomme. And I didn't like the chicken back in those days. But then in recent years, I went back and got the chicken, and it was really good. Well, the you thing know? about this Casa Arinda is they change the oil daily. You know, so you, you're, it, it's so well, fresh. Well, what's so good about Popeyes is they never change the oil. <laughs> well, they, the oil is rancid. <laughs> you know, that's that's the special kind of treat. Wait a minute, I got to get out of uh, out of Jeff's face here. Hold on a second, let me clean this up. There we go. A little less, yeah. less, little less in your face, uh, Jeff. There we go. Yeah. Um, but uh, do uh, do you like fast food at all, uh, Rob? <laughs> That's my uh, nemesis. Really? Like what? What is your? I can go eat fast food every day. 
Uh, really? And what's 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 your, what's your I don't care. What's your what's your go to fast food? I can't find one I don't like. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I like White Castles. I like well, I was going to say Bell I was going to mention White Castle. Yeah. What? I like White Castle. I can't get them here. Yeah. No. They don't have them down here. No. They're hard to get to. Uh, oh, you have you don't have White Castle. You have White Supremacy. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no White Castle. I can't figure out why I like White Castle. I mean, I just can't figure it out because when you, if I show you a White Castle hamburger, everybody, yeah. you will go, "What the fuck is that?" You yeah. know, it's a little it's piece. The of, it's it's a the round onions. little biscuit with a with a um, with a Sliver. hamburger in it. With holes in it, they puncture holes yeah. in it. Yeah, I don't know. The hamburger is is paper thin. Yeah, and yeah. it's paper thin, and and you buy like a dozen of them because you have to eat that many to fill yourself up. Did and, you say that they're square as well? And by the way, yeah, yes. they're square. Yeah. And square. and by the way, on top of it, yeah, uh, you can get them with cheese. <laughs> oh yeah, get them steamed. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the buns are steamed. Just get them the whole thing. They yeah. they put them in the box. Or whatever, and then they put them in the steamer. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's I think just... you can get them in Costco or someplace. The, like though they that. sell them, they yeah, sell them in good, not the same. It's not they the sell same. them by the. Uh, they sell them in, in. They sell them in most supermarkets. You can get uh, them in Seven yeah. Eleven. I see them in Seven Elevens. So really? Uh, yeah. yeah. So you well, know, I think they're same. only in New York and, and Ohio. For oh, sure. I oh, they're, they're in Florida. I saw them in Florida. Uh, yeah, they're in Florida. They're in uh, uh, Nashville. You know, uh, Tennessee. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, one time I, I went to Nashville, and my goal was to, the first thing I did was I had a White Castle hamburger. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I had faith with one? me. Oh, oh, I, got, I got one right down the street. <laughs> I stay. One. I stay away from it today. Uh, the closest I came to blowing my diet in a long time is I went with uh, Shecky to our sushi place, and I had a couple of pieces of sushi. So I blew my the diet. Rice. That's a, that's blowing the diet? Yeah, and then I, I had the, a half uh, a sashimi. chicken sandwich when I came home. Ha and I actually mm -hmm. ate rye bread with that chicken sandwich, or we whole wheat bread. So you I, don't do the sashimi instead I of blow, the sushi? So then I, I, I went into my, uh, my uh, uh, closet and put on every pair of pants that I have to see which ones were tight. And the same ones that have been tight before are t still tight. Uh, but I'm, I don't think I've gained any weight. But From one meal? Well, what happened is it? I went over to the sushi bar. I see I'm, it, it's, it's sushi, but it's also a lot of other stuff. So oh, I, can eat a lot a of the, I can eat a lot of the other stuff, although I had some crab balls, which I guess had some kind of crust on them. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it's a buffet, but it's it's... Rusty it's a killer balls. buffet, mm -hmm. okay? And then yeah. they have this whole thing with the sushi. And I'm going over the sushi, and I know it's got rice, and will this cause a problem to me? And my pants are starting to fall down. So I figured I can eat them. You know what I do <laughs> in those all-you-can-eat all sushi places? Is I take the fish off the rice. Uh -huh. And I, I still like the wasabi and, and soy sauce. It's wasabi. I, yeah, wasabi. 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 <laughs> uh, no, but I'll tell you, I... Um, Wasabi. Uh, but uh, but uh, so I, 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 I really blew my diet today, I think. But, you know, so tomorrow will be better. I, I haven't gotten on a scale in about a month. And the reason is I just got tired of getting on the scale and seeing it go up and go down and go up and go down. Like by a couple of pounds. So what a I just figure, hey, if I, don't, if I don't feel fat, I'm fine. It, it's water weight. For, Does it look like part. I gained weight, guys? Yeah, it's pretty uh, good. Yeah. Oh. Well, you saw me about two weeks ago, right? Yeah, we were looking thin. Yeah, okay. Well, thin, I don't know if it's I'm thin. Well, you yeah. had a touch of the I'm, cancer. I'm thin. Yeah, well, I have a touch of the cancer, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, uh, you know, so I mean, that, I mean, Shecky, Shecky said to me, "So, uh, so, how are we going to pay for this?" I said, "Well, uh, I've got cancer." Uh, <laughs> Dine and dash. Yeah, yeah. No, and I really don't have. No, it's not officially cancer yet. Although the report said it's, there's an 85 percent chance I have cancer, but that's just the computer spits that out based on 
something or another, but it's it's the good cancer. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I still, it still reminds me of, of fucking uh, little Richard telling me that he had a touch of the cancer and yeah. uh, as an excuse for why he couldn't do an interview. You know. Eh, well. That's a good excuse. You know what just happened to me? Uh, mm. I've been going crazy. You know, Phil got me these uh, earbuds, right? These yeah. uh, custom earbuds. And yeah that I that I have now mm -hmm. and I just came upstairs and I turned the computer on to come up here and get on GabNet mm -hmm. and I'm going crazy because I'm saying to myself they're not fitting right how come they're not fitting right and I'm taking them in and I'm putting them on I'm taking them in it's 10 minutes now you know why why backwards oh you had those in your ears I've had my hearing aids on the whole time oh <laughs> yeah and I'm going what's wrong why aren't these things fitting me I didn't know you had hearing aids oh yeah I've been wearing hearing aids about two years now radio screwed up my my ears oh, I was in radio all those time all that time and I never screwed up my ears but then again you may have blasted it in your ears I worked in nightclubs too for many years oh, okay all right that would do it that would do it. You know, I mean, uh, you remember Peter Townsend? I mean, you remember how loud the Who used to play in front of yeah, those amps? Yeah. And he went so deaf that they recently changed the name of the group from the Who to the What? <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting a long time to use that one. I, I know. I've used it a dozen times. You just haven't been paying attention. So, uh, yeah, how do they, are, they, are they getting more comfortable? Yeah, they are. The only problem is that. I because I'm using an external mic here plugged into the laptop now. Yeah. I can't hear myself when I talk. I hear myself really loud in my head and I can't get used to that. Is there a solo on the uh No, no, no. I'm not hearing the microphone because it's like when you put your fingers in your ears and you mm -hmm. talk, you hear yeah. yourself reverberating in your head right. and that's what I hear. So I I'm use it for sound that. for sound earphones for my my uh, iPhone. I use uh, Sound Peats. I have Sound Peats too, and they are and ch they're cheap and they're good. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're really good, the good. So how this whole thing got facilitated was yeah. I got to a point where I, my last trip, I had to wear my Sound Peats for about seven hours. Yeah, and every time I wear any plug-in headphones, I don't care whatever they are. These are the soft tips on the end of the Sound Peats. Yeah, yeah. I get a headache from it. Really? That, oh. Yeah. So Phil, so I talked to Phil, and he had I had these things made for the sound peats and for these wired headphones. Well, I got a new sound pea. I pay, paid about five bucks more and got their super delicious sound peats, which is a, a has, is a bigger thing around. It has a different it it it, 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 it the sound is uh, is delicious. It's just I'm wonderful. real happy with the sound. They're really it's cheap too. Like, They're like uh, under 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 the, under thirty dollars. Uh, yeah. Under How did the mold thing work on those uh, on the ones that fit together magnetically? Yeah, and that's that it. Sound that's the sound peats. Yeah, yeah. They, they, um, I, I I don't use those as much as I use these. Yeah. So I, I tried them on and they fit just as comfortably. But yeah. I only only had them in my head for about. Yeah, in the, in the beginning. Minutes. Well, the, the sound peats. The sound peats have have a an answer to the uh, Apple. Ear pods. pods or whatever they call those things. Ash pipes. Yeah. Uh, and they just are little round things with a square thing on them as a, as a base. And you put them both in your ear. And it's not like those fucking hash pipes hanging out of your ear, which I can't see why anybody wants to use those. And how they keep from losing them, how they keep from having them fall out of their ears. Those I like things. The sound peats are, are magnetic. Yes. Yes. And I have a nice little case. I keep them with me. So when I travel, I have them. Yeah. Well, the new but ones I, I have, travel, I don't have mag uh, the new ones I got are magnetic, but they're not, they're smaller magnets than the, the other ones. And, but they still stick together very nicely. And you just put them around your neck. And this yeah. one has two like bulges in the, in the wire, I think to kind of just make it conform to your neck. So, so when it's there, it's very, it's just very comfortable. It's just really nice. I'm getting quite used to them. But um, when do you wear them? 
Uh, when, I I'm, never, I, when I'm walking around I and when I go to the gym, I watch some videos and uh, things okay. like that, yeah. you know. And uh, I always I always have my earphones on when I'm walking down the street in New York City. Yeah, I don't want to hear this fucking town. Okay? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't and you also don't want to be aware of anybody that's going to hit you over the head and yeah. take your wallet. It, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm oblivious, you know. Yeah. I took my new camera out today to uh, Shecky's and yeah. shot with it. And I got about uh, 30, uh, 35 minutes of video with one battery. So that's not bad. You know, they, everybody was saying, oh, it just eats up battery power. Yeah, because they're used to getting like three hours on a camcorder. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that these don't do that. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to replace the battery. So you take a couple of batteries with you. But I, I pretty well, I'm in fact, what I did was a whole uh, trip out to, uh, out to Queens and also part of it, a trip through Shecky's museum at home of cartoons mm -hmm. and things like that so I'll pro i'm gonna make it into a video and show it here some night soon and bore you all with my home movies mm -hmm. you know um i listen i got a you know i, I read that letter you last can. night that i got you I'm know from, mm -hmm. from uh from that guy who, i never want to put it on i'm hot it's kind of, what? can you put the temperature up one notch <laughs> oh it's a family fight Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Over the temperature. What, tell her, what's Al the temperature tell her Alex now? says turn or, up the or heat. In Connecticut. Yeah, um, I know it's sixty four in the house, but what what is it outside? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it cold outside? I don't know. I have my zipper closed. Anyway, um, <laughs> bada boom. So you, you heard that letter I read last night that I got from some idiot saying that I had to send him a thousand dollars, otherwise he was going to send mm -hmm. pictures of me watching porn. Mm. Uh, that he had done by getting into my camera. Uh, and then he says, cut and paste uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Bitcoin number. But you couldn't do it because the letter itself was a JPEG and you can't <laughs> cut and paste a JPEG. What I know this guy is, was totally the most inept con artist I don't know. ever. He knew that you watch porn. Now, if it was some 80-year-old lady that didn't watch hey, porn, hey, hey, the hey. porn threat wouldn't have worked. So how did he know that, that I watch porn? A it's a pretty yeah. good bet. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good bet. <laughs> it's a pretty good bet. Uh, but on top of it, uh, uh, what I did do is I did change at, uh, my home Gabnet email address. I did change the password just to be on the safe side. But you know. But he has it because he has a that program that you can see people's keystrokes. Mm. Um, I, I I had that uh, for uh, for the store at at one time, uh, but I let the license run out. Uh, but uh, you can you can see screenshots. You can see every keystroke. Let's say they type in there, Phil is a fucker, mm -hmm. and then they go backspace, backspace, backspace. Great guy, <laughs> you know. I can see both. You can see that. That's very nice, Phil. That's great. I'm so I'm so happy for you. Yeah. Anyway, so we got that thing last night, and I, uh, um, you know, I can't remember what I just, what did I change my, uh, well, I have it written down. I keep forgetting. What did I change my uh, number to? Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, I, I had the, I had a similar thing happen. Uh, you know, when I, before I left, I lost my wallet. Yeah. So I stopped all the, uh, uh, they they issued new credit cards mm -hmm. uh, for myself and the store because I had the store credit card. Yeah. Uh, my email for the store cut off uh, because they didn't get their payment, and uh, so you know I'm trying to and so I'm getting I'm getting this thing on the screen that says you know we need your uh, your Microsoft credentials, and uh, I'm typing in the thing and I couldn't get it, so I call up the company that hosts my email and I said. Hey, you know, uh, what's going on here? And then I told him my story of woe. And he says, yeah. They, he says, they, you were cut off because they didn't get their payment. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I thought I couldn't remember my email address. Yeah. I, and I tried I, all I'm just trying to suspects. remember, what did I change my new password to? Well, I have it written down somewhere. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, let me see here. Oh, so today, I just now, a while back, uh, a thing came by as a message on my messenger on Facebook. Mm. 
Uh, so I want to read this just in, because everybody here has Facebook, so they're probably going to get this, right? <laughs> this message is to inform users that our servers have been very busy lately. So we ask you to help solve this problem. We ask active users to forward this message to everyone in your contact list to confirm <laughs> active Facebook users. If you do not send this message to all your Facebook contacts, uh, your, and your account will remain inactive with the result of losing all your C-O-N-T move this message. Your smartphone will be updated in the next 24 hours and you will have a new design and a new color for chat. Dear Facebook users, we will update to Facebook from 2300 p.m. until 5 a.m. on this day. If you do not send this to all your contacts, the update will be canceled and you will not have the possibility to chat with your Facebook messages. Now to begin with, it's so badly written that's what I was just mm -hmm. That you say. can't understand what they're trying to say. I mean, what? if right. you're going to be from a foreign country and you're going to run a scam on the rest of the world, please learn, have somebody who knows the English language write right. the letter. My friend called me today and said uh, that Facebook was down for three hours, that it That's had right. a massive crash. Did. When did it have a massive crash? Today. What? Oh, really? Because last night YouTube had a massive crash. I I couldn't sign on and post my uh, video till about two o'clock in the morning. North Koreans. It, 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 no, <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, uh, yes. Same uh, thing. Yes, Charlie. And not only that, but since once Facebook came back up, I have not been able to comment on any posts all day. It That's won't let Donald me do it. Trump. It always fails. That's Donald Trump. Really? I'll tell you something. Uh, I really am getting to hate Facebook. And I'm getting to hate Facebook because, to begin with, they're not policing this kind of shit. You know? That would never happen in my space. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there are only two people using my space. <laughs> no, I just, I, I just think it is time for us to just give up on, on Facebook. Because they allow yeah. so much crap to go through and so many scams to be done. You know, okay, I'm laughing about this because I know better, all right? Although, to be on the safe side, I sent this to all my friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't get it, so I must not be one of your friends. <laughs> no, that's right. That's why you didn't get it. But anyway, uh, you know, and I just, I just wonder why... Facebook, you know, they're so busy trying to police against the Russians who do not, I don't think, do the damage these guys do because there are a lot of very naive people who belong to Facebook. You know, there are two billion naive people who use Facebook and who are going to get something like that and they're going to be worried by it and they're going to yeah. react to it. Uh, you and I know it's a piece of shit and you just laugh at it. I read it on the air and I delete it and block the user. And, you know, and I, I block the user and I might be unfair because the actual user might just be somebody who's one of my friends, you know, oh, be, and who didn't, and they're spoofing, they're their, spoofing uh, it. Yeah. 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 That happens a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, I mean, but I'm sick and tired that Facebook doesn't do something about this. And now you say today they were down for three hours. So yeah. somebody's hacking into them. It, they, they'll never admit that somebody hacked them. Okay, but yeah. that's probably what happened. So, you know, what are you going to do? You know, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. The world yeah. we live in. Yeah, it's the world we live in, and it gets more and more dangerous because of the technology. I mean, you would have thought, you know, and I, uh, I was always who's, who's who's that guy that said that he invented the web? Besides you, that uh, uh, that uh, I never uh, said I invented no, the I know, web. I, I invented uh, the podcast. Yeah, uh, close enough. But uh, there was a guy yesterday. Uh, no, the guy who said Timothy, he uh, what? Timothy. Um, Begley or something like that. Uh, he he's the guy is credited with inventing the web thirty years ago, and uh, he thirty years ago been, it was invented long before that, Phil. 
Well, the, the news thing that I heard. That's, uh, that's 30 years said. ago would place it when? Uh, uh, 1980? 89. 89. Uh, I think oh, yeah, I, it was I think I was I was already using computers in 85. Yeah. It was well maybe did he, he invent didn't, ARPNET? Th there was ARPANET, but that was back in the 70s. Well, maybe I got the date wrong, but uh, this was on several different uh, radio stations uh, that you know I listened to in the car. Yeah, and, all of uh, which are Michael so, Savage. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, this guy had made a prediction, uh, or uh, it was saying that the web is being misused, and uh, you know he was um, he was kind of foretelling what you're saying now as well. Well, but what I'm saying is, is that I, you know, I've always been a proponent of the internet, and I've always been a proponent of technology, and and all this stuff just absolutely, it was what I was looking forward to, and yeah. I didn't realize that the day would come when all this technology would come back to bite us in the ass, that people are misusing it, they're using it for mm -hmm. cons, and it's gotten just downright dangerous. I mean, we were talking last night about this letter that I got, you know, that if I didn't pay $1,000, I was, he was within 20, 48 hours, he was gonna send pictures of me watching porn and what I was watching, right? Uh, and what to, you were to, doing to, to all my friends, and I'm sure you've all gotten it by now, and I've had a good laugh. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, he, 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 there was a, there was a, I went online and looked at, you know, this kind of scheme, and of course it said this was so common they were actually saying it almost wrote for what this guy wrote, wrote to me. And one of the items said, but this is a serious deal because people have wound up committing suicide because they thought that somebody was going to release this stuff and that it's become dangerous. And, you know, I, I just find, I, I just think that with all the things our government does, I mean, we go after this and, oh, we, we get apoplectic over that and, you know, <clears throat> even people, you know, Mexicans knocking at our door. This is the real danger in our society. These are the people who are truly hurting other people, and nobody's doing anything about it. Uh, yeah, this this guy's name is Tim Berners Lee, and he says it's the inventor of the web. Says internet is broken, but he plans to fix it. He told CNBC uh, that there was uh, that there's been a big change in the web since he invented it nearly 30 years ago. In He's the history. founder of the World Wide Web. Uh, uh, let's see here. Tim Berners Lee. Lee. Uh, he is. Uh, he, well, it's, it, hold on a second. And, and that was let your commie CNBC. Let me, let me, let let me get a Wikipedia thing on him. So I, uh, yeah. uh, uh, it's Ber Berners Dash Lee. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Known as Tim BL, is an English engineer and computer scientist, best known as the inventor of the World Wide Web. Now, he wasn't oh, the inventor well, of the internet. He was the inventor of the World Wide Web. That they got me on that one. <laughs> well, no, no, there's a difference. Yeah. Um, and that the World Wide Web is, is the uh, situation we cr it created so that you would all have addresses and things like that and uh, the people speaking to people and so on. It, he came close to inventing the internet, but I think the internet itself was... Uh, was was ARPANET, wasn't it, uh, yeah. Rob? Yeah. ARPANET, yeah. Yeah. Originally. But I just got an email today. I, I belong to this thing called, um, I get this regular email from, I'm not even sure the name of the company, but it always has a lot of interesting stories. Yeah. And the one day was the internet turns 30. And then it, it showed like the first GIF, the first spam email, the first... Mm like about 12 or 13 different firsts. The internet turns 30. I could swear in 85 I was using the internet. I used it in in, in the 70s. Uh, my friend uh, worked for Fairchild, and uh, I went down to his place in Palo Alto, and it had to be like 1975. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, do you want to play backgammon with the Stanford computer? And I said, yeah. And so uh, yeah. he dialed it up, and I was playing backgammon with the Stanford computer. That was my first foray with the with the web. Actually, the internet was kind of stolen uh, by by the public. 
uh, because it was originally created as a communications device between uh, um, educational institutions and medical and, and medical and a few other things like that. And uh, they would talk to each other on it. And all of a sudden, people learned how to piggyback on it. Before you knew it, you and yeah. I were using the Internet. Uh, the same thing happened with, with uh, GPS. GPS yeah. was a government thing. And somebody right. learned how to read those satellites. And so they started using them, too. And I remember I was one of the first people that, that, that used it. I got a device, and they... It was a little yellow device. You put it on your computer, and it told you exactly where you were. Uh, so, I just I, googled gyroscopes too. What, what were you? I, I, I just googled uh, the internet, web, the World Wide Web. Not yeah. the internet turns thirty years old. Yes. Well, the World Wide Web was con conceived March 12, nineteen eighty nine, by computing legend Tim Bern Berners Lee. Berners -Lee. Yeah. 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 So that was done March 12, 1989. Yeah, but that's not the the first internet. Well, it, you know, it, it was known as ARPANET, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's been around since the 70s. Right. Yeah. Well, when they said the World Wide Web, I just assumed that was internet. But now I've yeah. still yet to be able to have anybody explain to me where the where the internet is. It's everywhere. But I know it's everywhere, but how does it get there? And what, where, does it just float across? How does it get from here to England? How, how do I hear from... Uh, uh, private it's, it's, networking. it's in Russia. It's private computer networking that's mm -hmm. set up all over the world. Mm -hmm. And it's just routes from router to router to router to router. Okay, but it's free. Well, so well, they monetized it. No, they yeah. no, no. A, a, internet providers monetized it, but yeah. they still are using the internet themselves for free. They're 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 putting you onto the internet. Uh, don't they have to pay ICANN or any of those kind no, of guys? No, to... you, you pay ICANN for a uh, for a uh, address. Address, yeah. yeah. Huh. But I mean, who's getting paid for all these? And I happen to know that there were. I used to know them. There was something west. Uh, there were a couple of uh, internet pipelines. Western Union? Uh, no, there was something called something west, and I'm trying to remember what it was called. Mm. But uh, it, still, I said, to, I often ask this question, and, and people don't, can't give me a, a straight answer. I said, where's the internet? How do, how do I find it? Why, how do I know? Is it getting there by wires? Is it getting there by uh, short wave? Is it, how's well, it, you, yeah. you, how, you, is, how does it get, how does it get from here to uh, Brie in Dubai? But you, you can see a path. Uh, there's ways of. How, but how is, how is that path facilitated? Is it, is it short wave? Is it a radio wave? Is it no. wires under the water? What, what is, how is it done? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Uh, that's yeah. a good question. And fiber, even, I would say. What? Fiber. No, but they was here before fiber, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was, it was operating All long before fiber. All I'm saying is, fiber. where does that, when I, when, I'm going out right now, and I'm going to, uh, I don't know where my server is, but it's a company called Voscast. And Voscast is out there uh, sending this signal out to the Internet. Now, yeah. Where is it? How's it getting? How how is Bree getting it? He's in. Uh... It says here most of what you see on the internet, including possibility of this article that I'm reading, mm -hmm. travels to you from underwater. In fact, 99% of all international data is transferred through a labyrinth of cables stressing across the ocean floors of the world's oceans. There are 229 of them, each no thicker than a soda can. Wow. Now you do remember that ah. there was originally there was a, uh, a, a Trans cable, the tra cable, the transatlantic cable, Trans yeah. cable yeah. which was a one cable took them forever to do it. How they ever did it, they don't know. Uh, and now you say there are tons of them underwater. Now, isn't that an old technology? I wonder what uh, it would look like if if something were to. You know, they're just cables, and what happens if, you know, underwater, under the ocean, eventually they're going to rot. I would wonder if Jason would know this stuff. Oh, no, Jason wouldn't know this stuff. Because of the, you know, the AT&T technology. Where's all my video audience going tonight? Maybe there's oh. some trouble with transmission. 
you know, I, I the signal's mm. going out okay, but it's just, I'm, uh, it's not the same numbers I usually get. Anyway, yeah, because it's a show. The not show's, yelling. The show sucks. Uh, yeah. No, I just, all I'm saying is I've often wondered that. We, we say the internet, you know, uh, and and we, that's a simplified answer. I know that I go on the internet and, and Bree can hear me in uh, Kuala Lumpur right now, right? But still, how does it get there? You it's know. a series of tubes, don't and, you remember? And how does it get there for free? If you actually, you, you say it's an internet, it's a series of tubes, but this article, which is on the World Economic Forum website, actually calls it internet tube. You could look at the internet like you would look at stops on a, like the New York City subway map. Mm -hmm. They've got it all mapped out here, how it, how it connects. Oh, well, that's fine. But I still want to know why, how come it doesn't cost money for that carriage? A whole bunch of people so in love with this idea, they do it for free. They build all this infrastructure for free. I, I, think I don't a know lot who built the infrastructure. I guess the government. Well, I, I think private enterprise built a lot of it because they use it. Mm -hmm. So they have a, they have a, uh, you know. But if it was private enterprise, they wouldn't let other people use it for free. Not for free. <laughs> I think I think it was the government, wasn't it? That uh, uh, I think it was the government that laid the first cable, anyway. I yeah. don't. I don't know if it was our government. Yeah, you know, I think it was. Our government's always behind on shit like that. Yeah. But I, uh, I, I just, you know, I just, I just, I, I, it's, I know it's a very simple question I'm asking folks. But when we always said the internet, and I said, okay, I assume that it exists because I know it exists. I say something here, and Bree hears me in Dubai or in Kuala Lumpur. You, you, you had some guests on CNET that were from AOL. And they were describing. Oh, they never how, knew what the internet was. Well, no, <laughs> they, they were describing them. how how they make out of these addresses uh, email address a, a simplified email address. Well, because they were all and, IP addresses. Right, but they were. I mean, long, you know, beyond long. And I, and I listened to them on your CNET show uh, describe that. It almost uh, turned me off to the internet because it was too complicated. <laughs> so. I mean, I just, uh, all I know is that this is a kind of, it's almost like I often said that everything is explained by just saying it's magic. Yeah. That if you take anything, <laughs> anything, and you then extrapolate it like a little kid would, like uh, where, where, where does food come from? Well, food comes from the earth. Well, how did the earth get there? Well, it was made, and by the time you're through with the kid, go keep, keep harping away at how come, how come, how come, your last answer is going to be it's magic. No, uh, <laughs> you know? that, that doesn't hold up anymore. Now it's fake news. Oh, it's fake news, I see. <laughs> it's Just magic. Google internet backbone and take a look at what Wikipedia writes about it. Yeah. Yeah, but is there something they called something West? I'm trying to remember now. It was it was the one uh, 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 node of the internet that I knew of, and it was on the West Coast. Uh, so it's owned by there are six tier one companies. Tier one providers, the largest providers known as tier one, have such comprehensive networks that they never purchase transit agreements from other providers. As of 2016. There are six tier one providers, and they're called CenturyLink, Level 3, Telia Carrier, NTT, GTT, Tata Communications, and Telecom Italia. Those are the six huge, big tier one providers. Of Tata the is never, a really we never big heard of them, did we? And then there's, Bode that? then there's the biggest company of all, Bodacious Tatas. Right, Bodacious. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tata is in India, they even make cars. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. A car for like a thousand dollars or something. Yeah. Uh, it, it's new. All, all I'm saying is, is that you know we uh, we do pay an internet service provider. Yeah. To get us onto the internet. And they have to pay. They have to pay. I'm sure they have. I'm sure they have to pay. Somebody's got to pay somewhere. Yeah. And and what happens, we've never had it happen where one of these companies went, fuck all y'all, we're not letting you on our internet anymore. Well, yeah, they called that uh, the thing you didn't like, um, uh, <laughs> uh, in, 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 internet 
uh, that guy Pi uh, brought it in and the speeds. What, what do they call that? Oh, Wait, that you were worried about the net speeds neutrality. being cut. net neutrality. Net neutrality has just been killed, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been killed. Thank oh, you. It, 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 no, it, net neutrality. The thing to stop net neutrality, which Ajapai wants, has been killed. He's he's been oh. stopped in his tracks. Tracked, yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Uh, there are all kinds of suits and all, so everything. It's strategically a, inter interconnected computer networks and core routers. Mm -hmm. That's what Wikipedia says. That's why uh, we only have yeah, five people yep. listening to us tonight. <laughs> well, you know. At the beginning, I remember that. You know, I, I just. The telephone system. It's just that, it's that th these things, at certain points, we just. Like, I love people who always talk about, well, I'm doing cloud computing. There's no fucking cloud. <laughs> you, yeah. You're you're go, tell, you're you're sending tell the you're, IT you're, industry that. Yeah, I'm paying two hundred dollars a month for the cloud. You you're sending a uh, a, a signal uh, to a computer in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. That's your yeah. cloud, asshole. No, that's, but that's not what they mean by cloud. What they it, mean it's, by it's cloud? Hosting. Offsite it's, hosting. You don't know. Like in the old days, you knew where your workloads resided. Yeah. You yeah. put in servers and you knew that your your application ran on that server. Yeah. In the cloud, it's not it's not dependent upon any specific infrastructure. You That's dumb why terminals, it's considered basically. a cloud. Mm. It's yeah. it's just out there. Well, uh, for instance, I use a company for my uh, accounting system. They're in Texas. They host the right. The thing, and uh, so it's off-site, and I don't have I don't have to use a server right. anymore, which was a pain in the ass because every five about, years I needed a new one. Yeah, and you don't have to worry about if it goes down. You know, right. all they the do the updates, and right. you know, I make one phone you call. To, you just have to worry about security. So, so this thing, I I didn't know that uh, that uh, that uh, uh, Facebook went down today because I was out of the house, so I didn't know. Uh, but I did have trouble when I first came on, in here. <laughs> getting onto my page and then I had to like reboot the the route of yeah. the uh, uh, Facebook page but uh, uh, I didn't know they were having trouble I do yeah. know that YouTube last night was having problems that yeah. I couldn't upload my uh, videos to it for is that why you got while. cut off on the interview or no no uh, no, no, no well that was no. day before uh, that was that was the end of my interview with Ronnie oh. yesterday I, well, it, all, <laughs> all kinds of problems when I deal with her. And it, it, I, I never have any problem, you know, with people, with you guys. You're not out of sync at all, you know. Maybe she doesn't have a lot of bandwidth. Oh, there, there's something, something it has to do with, I'm using the switcher called OBS, and it overlays over the picture that she's got there. It kind of overlays a little bit. And I found when I didn't overlay it, when I moved it, all of a sudden she got in sync. So there was something with OBS and with her sync, and it's it's strange because it doesn't happen with anybody else. Even and I'm using another line when I do those interviews. I don't use GabNet Live because I'm afraid that if I use GabNet Live, somebody's going to call me during the interview. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Are you doing a show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I you know. Um, so I uh, you know uh, I it's just all it's magic folks uh so anyway uh, uh listen did you hear about the latest uh this is this one and this one i gotta kind of defend the person okay uh fo another fox uh, host got in trouble <laughs> this time who do you think it is this time well yesterday it was janine Pirro, and that cunt deserves it tucker carlson yes it was tucker carlson Ooh. D dear old tucker my it. old friend tucker you know what did he do Mother Tucker. I used to do his show every Friday. Every Friday I would do his show when he was on when he was on MSNBC. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, you remember Janine Pirro got in trouble for her comments about uh, the Muslim congresswoman Ilan Omar. Well, now Tucker Carlson has become the focus of controversy over his past remarks. Uh, the liberal advocacy group Media Matters for America, Soros. who I hate absolutely hate and may have been responsible for the reason why I'm no longer a serious XM. Um, this week released two batches of recordings 
Carlson made as a guest on radio's Bubba the Love Sponge show <laughs> between 2006 and 2011. You just uh, can't keep coming back. As, some of that had to take place. Probably, on. I would say that had to take place when the Bubba the Love Sponge was on uh, Howard's channel Sirius. on Sirius. That's right. That's right. Before he worked at Fox. This is before he worked at Fox. The release was timed to coincide with Fox's meeting with advertisers on Wednesday. The report uh, says that... Uh, uh, in the tapes, Carlson made remarks minimizing statutory rape, used sex, sexist slurs to refer to a specific woman, and referred to Iraq as a crappy place filled with a bunch of you-know semi-illiterate primitive monkeys. All right, now, he said all this, but it was before he worked at Fox, and it was in between 2006 and 2011, uh, and um, Carlson is standing his ground responding to the release by attacking media matters and vowing that he will never bow to the mob. The report quotes Carlson saying that it is pointless to try and explain how the words were spoken in jest or taken out of context or in any case bear no resemblance to the actual uh, thing. Oh, can't that uh, be the solved thing. easily? Huh? He like grabbed her by the pussy. Can't that be solved easily by just getting the actual broadcast and playing it back? I'm uh, sure they did. Well, to begin with, let me say, first of all, it doesn't matter. He said this in 2006 to 2011. They are alleging their sexist comments, but that's only their interpretation of the comments. Okay. And if you know Bubba the, the Bubba the Love Sponge show, it was always kind of a comedy show, and people who went on there acted outrageous. All right. I don't think that he should be held to account for what he said on those shows. I think and they're holding I think, other comedians I, uh, to that to that. Uh, well, uh, me media matters are a bunch of fucking creeps. All right. And, th and supposedly they're on my side, but they're not because they operate uh, in a in an atmosphere of. Well, it's that same atmosphere I talk about when I talk about McCarthyism. You know, it's it's uh, making people have to uh, be in trouble for something they did years and years ago, not recently, not in their current job. And um, I, 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 you know, I mean, I, I don't dislike Carl uh, Tucker because he was very good to me, uh, but I, I do feel sorry for him in this case because Media Matters is really an ugly organization. As you say, it's funded by George Soros and used as his, uh, uh, what can we call it? Uh, they go out and do his dirty SS. work. They do, they do his dirty work for him, yeah. you know. Uh, and uh, I always disliked Media Matters. I always found them to be, uh, uh, and that's one of the reasons I think I'm no longer at Sirius because I complained about them and I always kept saying that they were terrible. And uh, uh, the guy who did a, one guy who was a, a guest on people's shows and did some replacement, this guy named Ari, I can't remember, Raven something or another. Weishman? Uh, no. He, uh, uh, he, uh, he was in charge. He was one of the Media Matters honchos or whatever. And uh, he got very mad because I said some nasty things about, uh, about Media Matters. And uh, before I knew it, I was out of work at Sirius, and guess who had the morning show? This guy. Really? Yes. What's his name? Ari Raven something or another. Raven Mad. Um, uh, and he was terrible, too. He was not good. And I think a part of it had to do with... Um, them trying, them getting me out of there, and maybe Soros using his his push to call people at Sirius and say, uh, "Get rid of this guy, replace him with our guy." Yeah, and uh, I, what I understand is, uh, Media Matters, uh, when they find somebody that isn't in lockstep with uh, their um, uh, opinion or their uh, goal, uh, or talks against anything yep. that they stand for, then they go after you. Yeah. 
And and uh, in and that's the, Nazism. Well, uh, they were mad at me because I was. Uh, uh, well, what happened was I kept getting Media Matters email. I think it was, and I I finally said, well, they quit sending me this shit because really, you know, uh, I I I get enough, uh, uh, you know, uh, junk yeah. email as it is already. And this is completely ridiculous. I don't like the Media Matters email. So Ari Riven, whatever his name was, uh, wrote me a note and said, then I'm, we're taking you off our mailing list. Oh boy, am I being hurt by that. But this guy never forgot this. And he was out to get me. And he was one of the heads of, of Media Matters. And that's who they gave a show to when they, when they fired me. He got my job. Wow. You know, and I was not surprised when it happened because it was, uh, and I, and I, if I ever had to assign a reason for them letting me go, I would say probably that was it. You know, that there was some, that, you know, Soros maybe called up the head of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Sirius and said, uh, we want that guy off the air. And because he was George Soros, you know, it, w it was done. And I want you to put our guy in his place. And there was no chance that it was uh, a beef that uh, seemed to have been running around on YouTube or the Internet that uh, showed uh, Howard Stern going up to your studio uh, fighting mad. And then he gets up there and, and talks to you for a few minutes and he goes back down to his studio and says, God, he's such a nice guy. I couldn't. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> and then two weeks well, later. You well, got... what's her name? His, uh, his uh, co-host. Um, um, Robin. Oh, the Robin. Robin. Said to him, said to him, gee, you were so nice with him. And she, he said, well, the minute I walked in the studio, he put out his hand and said, glad to meet you, Howard. Always wanted to meet you. And, uh, you know, uh, he says, how can I be nasty to somebody like that? He said he was too nice. He completely disarmed me. Yeah. Oh, so you're familiar. Yeah, you're, I'm sure you're familiar. I'm with familiar it. with it. It happened to me, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It was the only time, it was only, one of only two times that Howard ever went on another show on Sirius XM. And he actually, he actually came down from his studio. His producer, Baba Booey, uh, came in and said, uh, uh, he wants you to, he wants to argue with you. Will you come down to the studio? And I said, no, if he wants to argue with me, he has to come to me. And so they picked up the whole fucking studio with cameras and everything because he was doing the TV thing as well. And, and they, they, they hooked it in. So my studio was hooked into his studio and he walks in and we do the whole, the whole thing. The fight we were having was over this guy who was pranking, uh, what's his name, Wiener when he gave his right. press conference. Yeah. And I just said, you know, I find that kind of, I said, I find that kind of in bad taste. I said, but God knows Wiener is in bad enough shape as it is. He has been humiliated beyond all possible humiliation. And now in a uh, moment where he is getting up there and just saying, hey, I've been humiliated and I'm sorry about this and all of that, you got him only just making it worse. And that guy, Benji. Benji. Benji was yeah, the guy that did right. it, yeah. And he, and I said, you know, I said, I, I have no great love for Wiener. I said, I, and I have no love for what he did. But, you know, I think that to prank him is only taking the knife and sticking it in and turning it more, you know? Right. Uh, I said, I think it was cruel. I, yeah, I, I yeah. thought you took the high road. You know, yeah, that, they're, they're not a high road. Which show. was unusual for me. <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, but because you disarmed him by taking the high road, so he couldn't react. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, and I tried to explain it to him. I said I just found it in in terribly bad taste to do that. Uh, you know, the guy had already been humiliated, so you don't need to send your guy down to humiliate him when he's there to do a mea culpa for being humiliated. It was, right, yeah. but he, he, I think Stern was saying that uh, he was doing, um, uh, it was a promotion. You know, it was no, kind he of, acted on his own. He wasn't sent Yeah, to but, but what he was Bullshit. doing was, was making uh, headlines for their show. Yeah. And, uh, and 
So that that was his claim to fame. Well, you know something? You take responsibility for everybody who does anything in your name if they work for you. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, I couldn't buy Opie and know. Anthony's argument that they didn't tell those people to go down to St. Patrick's <laughs> Cathedral and fuck in the pews. You know? Mm. And, and uh, by the way, that cost me a job in Sacramento. Long Why? story. Why? Well, I, they, they, was, they, that what happened was I was supposed, they, they had a, uh, I was out of work. I was looking for work. I found a place in Sacramento that had Opie and Anthony on in the afternoon and were also running their show in the morning. And they decided that they wanted to put a, their own local show on in the afternoon and I was supposed to go to work for them. And I was supposed to like start on a, I don't know, a, this was on a, a Tuesday. We agreed to the whole deal. And I was supposed to start on Monday. And on like Thursday or something like that, they sent these people into the, uh, into the church, into St. Patrick's Cathedral to fuck in the pews. Um, uh, it was a promotion for Samuel Adams beer, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> And uh, all of a sudden, it becomes a big uproar about you know how they've been how they've been they did something horrible, and they got fired from the station here in New York on Friday, and then I get a call saying, "Well, we're gonna not be doing a show in the afternoon because." It, they just killed the whole thing with uh, Opie and Anthony. It was and a we're real talk for me. Yeah, we're probably just going to go to music. <laughs> were, you the one, you know? were you the one that uh, in New York, I, I was, it's a long time ago, but had people come down to the studio in, their, in, the, in the dead of winter in swimsuits, uh, women in swimsuits? Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, that, but how's that, that wrong? Was ABC yeah, uh, or uh, PLJ? No, I don't think I did that in New York, no. I, Did I, I do it in New York? New York? No, I don't know. I seem to remember something like that, but I think it would have been in San Francisco, actually. But uh, it was no, I was a kid. Uh, I, I think I, I might have said we'll give a prize or something to the first yeah. woman that comes down here in a bathing suit, and that she wore it, you know. On the, I, I think I thought there was a line, a, a bevy of people that came down. No, no, I don't remember no? that. No? I don't remember much of anything, you know. <laughs> The halcyon days. Yeah, the halcyon days. But, you know, I mean, I, all I'm saying is that, uh, uh, so how did I get into that whole thing with Opie and Anthony? Oh, then it was Howard. Oh, the, it was the Howard Stern, Stern thing. It was all Howard Stern thing, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, I mean, I, uh, you know who I'm, f I'm feeling a little sorry for? It, please forgive me, and this is going to shock everybody who's listening to this program. But I was feeling for a moment sorry today for Paul Manafort. <laughs> now, let me explain why. Okay, yeah, you please do. On this one. <laughs> and I'm not saying that the guy shouldn't be getting time in jail and I that he shouldn't be sentenced and whatever. But it's the circumstances under which this happened. In that, the government was trying to find out about the Russia probe and as a side effect of that, found out about all this horrible stuff that Paul Manafort had done. All right? And, and, and then he, uh, uh, it, it, he went on trial, and I think they found him guilty. I don't think he pleaded, you know. He didn't uh, you do know, it. I'm not sure. He, what, he do four a and a half years? He, what? He was sentenced to four and a half years. No, he years was sentenced to three, three a uh, little over four. Uh, a total of the, between the two charges, he was sentenced again today. Yeah. Something like close to seven years. And I'm thinking, you know, if this guy had never been involved in the Trump thing right. and done everything else that he already has done, he'd probably be walking the streets free. Yeah. Because and nobody would have paid, balls. nobody would have, paid attention to his malfeasance. Right. Now, well, granted, he's a criminal. He's a fucking crook. But it's the whole Trump thing that caused him to be found out. And so from that standpoint, I, I was thinking, okay, he's got seven years now. If Trump doesn't give him a, uh, a pass pardon. on it, a pardon, then he's going to have to serve that seven years. He's already He'll seven probably years probably serve three and a half. Well, whatever. Uh, that now they're thinking of hitting him with another ca case here in New York, which, of course, mm -hmm. the president couldn't pardon him from. Uh, 
Right, right. And they keep uh, keep piling charges onto this guy. Come on, you got him for seven years. I'm happy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's because they want Trump. Uh, That's what it is. Well, they're, they're going to keep they're going to keep chipping. Well, let's let's not armor. let's not get into that because then you and I are going to start arguing. But all I'm saying is I feel a little sorry for Manafort because he did something that a lot of other people do and get away with because it never comes to light. But it did because he was high profile due to his association with Trump. Does that make sense? Yeah, but he still doesn't mean I don't. Yeah, I don't feel bad for him. And you know what? Have you heard about this whole thing with these wealthy people? Oh, that paid. Oh, that that. colleges. We got it last night. Yeah. I hope yeah. they all fry, and I want to know all their names. Well, I think they William should be H. Publicized. Macy's wife. Wow. Uh, the, the the cute chick from Fuller House. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, you yeah, know, and I guess I the, there was some. some and her husband, uh, who was a executive, her, her husband gave who, a coach nine hundred and uh, a quarter of a million dollars, and somebody else nine hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and he lost his eight million dollar a year job today. This is why the country is in the shape. The world, forget the country. Yeah, the world is in the shape. Well, so I think nobody I think, has yeah. scruples or morals anymore. I if think you could, you don't teach it, your kids that it's not right to cheat. You just. I think that matter. story. I think that story is much more vexing to me than almost anything else. You know that I Green. hear about, uh, even some of the Trump stuff, because this is the it, it, here we have had our. Educational institutions, major ones: Stanford, Yale, uh, uh, USC, USC, uh, 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 Georgetown, compromised uh, for payoffs, and mm -hmm. that really, you know, I think what we what, what it says is the price of education has gone too high. The ability for the average person to get admitted to these colleges, based upon their skills and their abilities uh, has been diminished. There are people who didn't get into these schools because some kid wanted to turn Yale into a party school, you know. Mm -hmm. I and mean, don't forget uh, College of Marin. Uh, well, College of Marin, it was compromised completely. They, I think, but oh, they yeah. think they only had to pay the coach there about a hundred dollars. But anyway, <laughs> you know, um, uh, you helped me with a final exam I had there. Really. Yeah, you you, uh, you dictated the idea of um, uh, uh, not it was a technical or the tricolor film and uh, uh, you, you quoted the, the Becky Sharp movie. Oh, and, oh, oh, uh, oh, yeah. You mean you mean Technicolor? Technicolor, right? Yeah, three color Technicolor. And, yeah, so you you gave me the uh, the start of the paper uh, and and started me off in that direction. And what was the paper on? Uh, just just that. Oh, really? You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess I then cheated for you or something like that. Yes. Yeah, yes, okay. you did. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, how much did you write about? It's 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 how much did you pay him? He did it for free. <laughs> it, but it it is disgusting, and uh, you know the the thing is that um, uh, there there are two two famous people involved in this is Lori Laughlin. Who I barely know who the fuck she is, but supposedly Full she, House. Yeah, I, I, I never watched that piece of shit. Neither did I. Now, was, was neither did another friend of mine. Ne neither did another friend of mine, Bob Saget, who uh, I always said to him, "How did you wind up on that piece of shit?" He said, "For that yeah. paycheck, you do it too." Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, he um, uh, it, 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 they went after. Um, what's her name? Um, uh, Lori, uh, L Lori Laughlin and, and Felicity Huffman. They, oh. But there's a difference between the two cases. Uh, uh, Lori Laughlin, I don't know what they paid the money for, but she and her husband, who's a famous designer, who I never heard of yeah. and neither did my wife, uh, uh, paid a half, close to half a million dollars to get this kid of theirs, the one that made the videotape saying, mm -hmm. I'm here to party. You know I don't <laughs> care about learning. Uh, she, on her Facebook page, um, uh, they paid uh, uh, almost a half a million dollars. 
Whereas Felicity Huffman and her husband only paid 15000 well, That was to cheat on the SAT. It was to che- cheat on the SAT. So uh-huh. my question is, which case is more severe? They're, They're the, both same. the same. <laughs> They're the same. They're both exactly the same. Yeah. No difference. You know, uh, if, if you kill somebody with two, two bullets or you kill them with one bullet, what's the difference? They're right. still dead. Right. What's to say they didn't hire this guy, you know, and his expertise to get their kids into college, but didn't know exactly what he was doing to get them into college? Uh, I'm sure they knew, you know. Supposedly, they have her, uh, Felicity Huffman, on the phone talking to this guy or something. Yes, they have phone calls. And by the way, this guy, you know, was arrested a year ago. He was arrested a year ago. And then he pleaded guilty. He pleaded guilty. He's been cooperating. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a, they've been working on this since uh, 2018, like April of 2018. Yeah, he, yeah. he's so they, doing a he's doing a Cohen. Stuff. He's doing a Cohen. Well, no, yeah. he's not doing a Cohen exactly. This may get him lesser time. Don't you, yeah. don't you understand? It's just it's it's the society just again deteriorating because now you now your parents are teaching the kids it's okay to cheat. And so also well, I also I feel sorry for Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin because they are only one of about 50 people who were arrested yeah. in this thing, and we're not getting all the other names publicly because they're not uh, the names you know, that, the, that the well, the FBI is not going to put those names out well, because it, because guy, because uh, they're getting all this publicity via Felicity Huffman and Lori Laughlin. Uh, but they should publish all the names. Oh, they should absolutely. Now, the question is: Here's who I. Who, who I, I got to say, I feel sorry for only because they're the innocent bystanders are the kids who got into, wait for a minute, them. who got into these colleges. They may not have known how, but they got into these colleges and now everybody is pointing at them as they walk down the hallway. <laughs> yeah, they're being expelled. They're being let go. Not all of them. Oh, I heard they were all no, being let no. Go. They're all being uh, they're all being um, uh, looked at on a case by case basis. These schools have said. Oh, okay. I, I, yeah, yes. yeah. I, maybe I read it wrong. Yeah. Um, I have no sympathy for that. Well, do you think the kids really knew what was going on, or their mom? Absolutely. And mo- Somebody's taking your SATs and you don't know. If it's the SAT, you have to know about it. Yeah. Absolutely. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. In the case of Felicity Huffman, I don't think it wasn't. Wasn't that the kid didn't take and the SATs? They, Wait a minute. Let me one, finish it. There wasn't. There wasn't a kid yeah. that didn't take the SATs. It was that the proctor corrected the SATs, yeah. so the kid might not have known about it. No, no, no. There was a guy. I, I just read the article. Yeah. There were three guys. There was a coach who was like coach of the year two or three years running. There was not next year. Now you know why. There was a, there was a brilliant guy who could take all these tests, and he got ten thousand dollars for every test that he went to take, or fifteen thousand dollars. I'm not sure. Whatever. And the third person was that guy Singer, who was sort of like the 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 guy that ran the the fake charity. Right. That all these people. Oh, that's the bad <laughs> part about have... it. Here's the bad part. You just mentioned the bad part about it. These people paid this guy Singer to do this stuff, but they paid it into a um, uh, a foundation that he had, or charity he had, uh, yeah, and I'm trying to remember the name of it right now. And they paid to the charity, and that was a, cha- a tax deductible donation. So it's <laughs> I guess they're fraud. getting audited. <laughs> it's tax so that's fraud. tax fraud. Yeah. That's yeah. tax fraud. This thing is so yeah. deep. These people are screwed. Yeah, they're screwed. So, uh, this guy yesterday, uh, his name is uh, Bill McGlashan. He's uh, on leave after the admission scandal. He uh, he was the former Pimco CEO in Hercules Capital. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, he, he lost a big, big, big job. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and, I, I I don't think anybody should lose a job yet. The trial hasn't taken yeah. place. But well, they let know, him go. Innocent until proven guilty, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, but if you're uh, running a hedge fund, you you know. Well, you- the yeah, only yeah. way that that you would do this, if you were really rich, is you would just buy a new building. Yeah, right. Put your name right. on it. Well, Absolutely. that was the old way of doing it. Yeah. But you'd have That's to have a lot of money. You know, I was talking to Shecky about this today, and, and David Letterman uh, came from Ball State, 
He went to Ball State, and so he's always been very good at uh, giving scholarships and everything at Ball State. A lot of money he's put into Ball State. And he, they have, I think there's even a building with his name on it at Ball State. That's how much money he's invested in Ball State. But Harry, his son, is not going to Ball State. <laughs> you know, It's not like he's using that uh, to get his kid into college. So, you know, I mean, there's some people that just give the money because they want to give the money. And, hey, uh, you know, the kid wants to go there. They will go to the head of admissions or whatever and say, you know, let my kid in as a legacy or something like that. Because you can get your kid in as a legacy if you went to some place. Hi. Hi there. How you doing, Kevin? All right. How you doing? Yep. Yep. Doing fine. We haven't seen you in the last couple of nights. How you been? In the last couple of weeks, been kind of crazy. What do you mean crazy? Oh, poking and prodding, getting ready for my uh, operation oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Is this the stinger? Yeah, the zapper. Yeah. They put now. Explain what they're gonna do to you. They're gonna put the spinal cord stimulator in. Okay. I thought it's you had a. About, I th that big. Yeah, I thought you had a temporary one. I did have temporary one at Christmas time, yeah. And it didn't work. No, no it worked. It, out. it worked. Yeah, it worked. It was just temporary. It was for only a week to see if it would work. Mm -hmm. And did it, it stop did. the pain? So I've been pushing it off because I had stuff to do. And then uh, I have to. I had to get it done or the insurance wasn't going to stick with me on it. So is this an in-and-out uh, procedure, or is it uh, you stay overnight in the hospital? Or no, it's, it should be a it's a two-hour procedure, uh -huh. and I go home if everything goes good. Yeah, and then I'm laid up for about six weeks. What do you mean laid oh, up? Well, they won't let me drive. I can't lift nothing over five pounds. Can I you sit twist. in front of a microphone and talk to us? Uh, yeah, well, if I'm in a good mood. <laughs> let, it, let it be one grumpy son of a bitch, I'll tell you that. Well, we don't mind we, that. We just push the button and get You're it allowed to be grumpy, and there's you know that. why you're allowed to be grumpy? You've got a beard. Yeah. And well, all grumpy people have beards. Or throw food in and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Six weeks. Wow. Raw meat. Well, I mean, uh, that, uh, a lot of the, these recoveries are, are long, you know. I mean, Marjorie's yeah. recovery... She had the she had to wear the brace for like uh, uh, about what six, uh, weeks? six uh, twelve weeks twelve weeks. I've been doing a lot of research on the thing, and and from what I've seen is the it, they don't even turn it on for a week or so, about fourteen days, because it gets put into the back into the back into your back there, mm -hmm. and the pocket has to seal up, and the battery charger that they have that goes with it is a is like a wireless like your phone wireless charger it's a pad mm -hmm. and you have to sit on it and they don't turn that on because you have staples and that'll zap you i guess okay so they got to wait for everything they to wait, settle so down they gotta wait for that to heal up and then they okay. program it Take the staples out. yeah yeah then they program the thing about a i guess a week or so <laughs> later with all the programs and, and what should what should the sum total of this be relief of pain yeah it's relieves the pain in my legs it's the nerve pain mostly it's supposed to help with the neuropathy and that's that's what it did do it i was getting terrible shooters i went down to my daughter's <clears throat> orientation tonight my legs started shooting all over the place tonight is this wow. a similar thing that they use for like guys with parkinson's disease to stop well, the tremors yeah, it can be i guess but it's it's like you know mm. like the tens units yeah yeah it's the opposite of that you know how you feel the tingling yeah that's a low frequency signal. This is the opposite. It's high frequency. You don't feel it. Mm. So it's it's kind of cool. It's super high frequency. It's the only FDA approved device that they have on the so market. So how much is this going to cost your insurance company? Well, I did it in December and I haven't seen a bill yet. Oh, really? Yeah, so I don't know about There's the insurance no company, but now, you know, what what insurance, insurance do you have? You, you're not Medicaid. You're not Medicare yet, are you? Secondary, yeah. I got I got oh, insurance oh. and secondary Medicaid, Medicare. Oh, okay. Secondary Medicare. What, what do you yeah. mean secondary Medicare? 
Well, my wife, I'm on her insurance. Ah, yes. Works. Okay, I understand. Uh, I had so that when I was at, that, when uh, I was at Sirius. I had Medicare, uh, but because I was with a company that had over ten people, uh, it was my primary, and right. then Medicare became my secondary. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Well, it covers uh, quite a bit. Yeah, this week I've got to go in and sign up for Medicare. Really? Yeah. I thought uh, uh, my I, birthday's I, in uh, June. Uh, let me let me say this to you, Phil. Yeah. Do not sign up for Medicare because you don't believe in it. You don't think uh, it should I exist. Pay for it. Can I pay for I pay No, it. no, Phil. Uh, Phil, consider that a, a charitable contribution. You yeah, stand very much for your stand generosity. by what oh, you believe, Phil. Now it's entitlement. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your generosity. Uh, yeah. I, I, well, you know, it, no, I mean, stand by, stand by your president. He wants to kill Medicaid, Medicare. Yeah, he's he's going to be cutting it anyway, so you might as well just stop now. Yeah. That's a promise. That's true. Didn't he make the promise he wouldn't touch those things? Yes, yeah, he did. Yeah, sure he did. did. He's yeah. well, we'll see. Promise. That's a promise not kept, Phil. Yeah, he kept yeah. all those other promises. Well, uh, he's never going to. That's never going to pass in the budget. You know, okay. I, I get a hundred. You know, with with the Kaiser deal, uh, you know, you are sick, they take care of you. You know, you pay them their what their extra. Yeah, but you pay eleven hundred bucks a month for that. Well, that's because I'm not on Medicare yet. Their yeah. Medicare deal is ninety nine dollars a month. Really? On top of whatever you pay through uh, Medicare. Uh, uh, Medicare. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so what is it? Yeah, one, For Marjorie and I, our supplemental it costs us uh, f about five hundred dollars every three months. Okay. For the two of you. For the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. So or it would only if it was only one of that's us. That's like seventy-five dollars a month per person. Yeah. Yeah. But we get we get everything. We get dental. Uh, we right. get uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, we get uh, uh, you know a whole bunch of stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I didn't belong to SAG after, so I'm going to end up with you. Have to, you have to have a secondary, and my secondary is like secondary to none. I mean, it's really yeah. amazing that I, uh, I thank well, God. Kaiser, you know. Kaiser, I guess handles you know the, the secondary as well. Yeah. That's well, oh, you you do uh, you do that because you're both over sixty five. Who? Uh, Alex. Uh, we're, we're both over yeah, 65, both over 65. But yeah, the, because your wife, uh, uh, your I wife works. Yeah, she but has... uh, but I, yeah, but I uh, the secondary that I have, she has Medicare, and but she's in an office with less than ten people. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. And and then my secondary, uh, SAG after kept sending me these things for the last couple of years. Uh, you know, try our health, you know, you can do our health thing under the senior thing. And I never paid attention to it because I didn't think I qualified because I didn't yeah, yeah. have enough time that I spent working after jobs. And they said, oh, no, the fact that you've been a member of after and now you're a senior, oh, you, this is you, this can be your secondary. And how much is it? Uh, well, it's a $2,000 a year. I said, we, yeah. we said 2000 a year, and then Marjorie said to her bosses, we're paying $20,000 a year for you to insure me as a se having <laughs> secondary here. Well, how would you like it if I lowered it to 2000 And they said, we'll pay it. You know? yeah. and, and it is the best medical insurance I've ever had. You yeah, know, even bar if they none. just pay it and a little bit more to cover the taxes and treat it as income to you, you know, I mean, I mean my, my, my medical, uh, f for pharmacy, my medical went down from, uh, I'm now paying every three months what I used to pay for one month for all my drugs. Tell me that isn't a saving. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's amazing. Just amazing. God bless AFTRA. God bless you, uh, Sag. I'm, I'm just pissed that they put us on all these drugs. You know, every, every time I turn around, they're giving me one additional drug or they're adding to what I got. And you know, there's got to be something wrong with this picture. You know, well, that that's they, what I'm hoping this is going to nail. Oh, you know, I come nail home with this big bag because it's three months. So they make up three months worth of each drug yeah. I take. And I take about seven of them. And I come home, it's like I'm I'm this big bag of pills rattling, you know. Yeah, I just have them send it to me, you know. So you, because uh, Kaiser will you know, they'll send it to you, and they discount 
the pills. I remember when I only used to take one pill and it was LSD. <laughs> you know, I. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, and now yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I've got all, I've got one, two for my prostate. Uh, and I just had to get a re-upping of my prior authorization on my Cialis. Uh, and, uh, you know, I got a few other things, you know, you do the statin I take and the, uh, the um, uh, thyroid and a couple other things. I don't know. Between my supplements and the things that they prescribe, yeah. I'm taking 19 pills a day. Really? Yeah. Wow. You're rattling around. Yeah. Uh, but well, a lot of those, like some a of the bottle when you jump. Some of those, yeah. are, some of those. <laughs> yeah, are, my mail lady thinks she's got a mariachi band out there with the with the mail. <laughs> 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 I take 11 pills a day. Wow. Really? You take how many? Yeah. Eleven. Uh, really? Well, some of some of mine are supplements for you know uh, uh, they're not. The medically, uh, medical. Well, pills. I that's take the a job thing. of the AMA is to get everybody hooked on drugs. Uh, the thing that's, I should. The, yeah. uh, the thing the I'm deal. still taking is Enzebi or it's called something like that. Enzebi, I can't remember the name of it. And that's it, why they don't. Uh, they don't. They don't cover any alternative medicine. You can't go to any of the wellness clinics and yeah. use your medical benefits. That's all the AMA stopping that. Yeah. yeah. AMA sucks. Yes. And you know, and, and that all they do is they put these band aids on for the yep. you know for the diabetes. They give you metformin. Now I'm reading that metformin is so bad for you that uh, you know, <laughs> huh? What, Charlie? I said thanks. I've been taking it for about twelve years. I've been yeah. taking it for four or five now, and and I take two thousand milligrams a day. Yeah, they got yeah they got you. They got us all on pills. Government, yeah. the government wants you on pills. The AMA wants you I, on well, pills. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, the, the problem is that we're, we're the only country in the world, I think, that allows advertising on television for drugs. Two countries. Two countries. New Zealand, New Zealand, yeah. and the U.S. New Zealand and the U.S. And oh, and, speaking and, of that, have yeah. you seen the latest one? What? What's that? Oh, the the, the IUD. <laughs> uh, oh, they're yeah. dancing around a farmer's market with an IUD in her finger. Uh, what's it called? The color guard or something? No, not yeah. that's the that's the, that's the other, that's, that's the thing you the shit into. They it's got the they hole. got a whole bunch of people dancing around in a farmer's market, and she's got <laughs> I got the you know the IUD oh. pinching it between her finger, and a couple of kids are there, and they're dancing in the farmer's market. And hey, the saw kids one. There, there's a commercial. Going, what the fuck? There's a commercial I really hate. It's these uh, little bears, uh, and oh, one of the yeah. and, and there's, there's a there's a a um, pair of underwear on the floor, and nobody wants to pick it up. And you know he says his hiney is clean. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, the toilet well, paper. I, I often, I often. Well, uh, then then we're gonna have to go here shortly. Uh, but uh, I. Uh, this one ad, and I mentioned this to Ronnie, that bothered me was the ad for. If you got cancer, you take this pill and says extend your life. And if you look at the little writing on the bottom, it says may extend your life by three months. And then I went and checked to see how much this shit costs ten thousand dollars a month. What yeah. to so live three more months? You know what? The grandkids don't need the money. The grandkids <laughs> don't need the money. Yeah, mom and yeah, dad in their college fund. Tonight I saw the wackiest of these ads. They started out with with bent vegetables like a bent oh for carrot for, for the dick uh, yeah, yeah a bent oh, carrot that, and yeah, a bent bronze. pickle and they, it's the, it talks about if you have a problem yet your erection is bent that you can go and oh, get help oh yeah that was the other oh that's peroni's disease peroni's yeah, the, yeah the that was, the was isn't that that building in kuala lumpur they have a they have a pill <laughs> for peronies now yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yes. Oh boy. It's called this one. This one is the. Uh, it's Paragard. That's the IUD one. Paragard. Paragard. Spell it out. I'll have to. P A R A G A R D. I have to go look for those ads. Around. I haven't. I haven't seen them yet. Anyway, oh, hey, this, listen. This, uh, the one you're talking about, Rob. I gotta sit there, and my daughter's sitting yeah. in the other chair. I know. I get over your head. <laughs> I think tonight. Tonight shit. is a real record. We've only. With Phil here, we have only mentioned Trump in passing. We have not even talked about him. So, you know. I told you it'll end up being a no Trump zone. Yeah. 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 There it is. Oh, that's your thing? 
Yeah. Good oh, that. Okay. Real one. Hey, well, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck with that. And, and call. We'll change the channels on the yeah. TV. Yeah. And <laughs> I could probably do that. Huh? Yeah. And, and call us, by the way. We want to find out how it went. It went okay. Yeah. But good luck. We'll, a couple of days. But... We'll, we'll be. Yeah. We'll be thinking about you, Kevin. We yes, really will. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. Thank you very much, Rob Alfano. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you, Charles Wallace. I love the Charles. And, of course, Jeff Stein. If all of you would give a big wave goodbye, then the audience at home could wave back like I'm waving right now. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. That's our citizen panel. I'm going to hang up on them here. and get. I have to hang up on them, and I have to get offline so that Jack Bishop can use the phones next, and I hope you will call him. Uh, he's next with the intersection. I'll be back again tomorrow night right after Damian Chaplin chats with you on the exchange. Listen to him. He's it's a great little show. It comes on right before us. And then we'll be back again tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.